I'm going to start off with a little bit of audience participation with this. Um, so in, of those of us in the room, how many are doing lumbar instrumented fusions on a fairly regular part as their, of their practice? So and keep your hands up. And how many have image uh, or intraoperative navigation available at their hospital? So most. And how many are using it regularly? All right. So, okay. All right, so, all right, I just wanted to see what the audience was like. So, um, operative navigation and spine surgery, um, I, I've, it's, been a, uh, it's been a game changer for me in my, in my practice at the, at the Brigham. Um, here are my disclosures, none of which are related. So, this is how I used to do an MIS fusion. And this is, I'm going to talk about MIS fusion particularly here, but this applies to any fusion, really. But I used to do a biplanar fluoro setup, and this is what the room looked like. And if you look at this setup, like, there's nowhere to stand. Plus, how many are wearing lead regularly during their cases. Yeah. And do you wear it? Well, I mean, so yeah, I mean, lead to me when you're young, younger is great, but as time goes on, it gets heavier and heavier and hotter and hotter. Um, and then, and this is what it used to be like. And I got to a point where I could do, uh, you know, say a one level, uh, MIST lift like this in like two to three hours, which wasn't bad. Right. Cause, uh, in training it, I, I saw cases that took six hours to do right, open. Uh, but this is what it used to look like. Um, and now this is my MIS fusion setup. There's, you can, you know, here's the, here's the image uh, unit right in the corner there, but there's nothing there, right? It just looks like you're doing a Lamy. Uh, that's my uh, chief resident across from me. Uh, there's a scrub tech and there's actually room for like a student or two, right? So there's plenty of space uh, and none of us are wearing lead. Um, and if you look at the time, this was, this was Monday morning. We, this was us putting the, um, the, the pin in the hip. It's about 8.20 on the clock there, if you take a, if you take a look at that. Uh, this was the case that we did. Uh, I think she was 70-ish, um, grade one slip, you know, unroofed disc, stenosis, had all the typical symptoms, didn't work out. And this is the case that, that we actually did. And can we run that video? I know a lot of people think that the thing with image guidance is it takes too long, it's, um, there's a lot of setup, et cetera. Once you get that pin in, um, or the, the, the reference arc right there, Right? We do that up front. I don't even localize um, because you're going to use the intraop imaging to, to do that. This is the time it takes to bring in the machine. Right? This is, I'm going to let this run because I think I have a few minutes for this. Um, it does take a little bit of time, but you know, as you can see, what we've done is instead of draping the unit like we used to do um, 15 years ago when, when, when I first saw this in San Francisco, we just drape the patient with a couple half sheets. You, you bring it in. To, believe it or not, this RT tech is actually training as well, so this took a little bit longer than it normally would. Uh, but if you have someone pretty well versed in it, it you know, you, you close the ring, and then the, and let's run this video. This is this is us actually acquiring the images. And for those of you who know how this works, when you hear that high pitched sound, that's when it's actually acquiring the image. It takes 30 seconds. Um, and again, you know, if if you get this system down, it, it's very very quick. Um, you can't see the time on the clock there, but um, you know this is probably eight, like thirty-five right now, um, for when we started. Um, and again, I'm just gonna let this run because this is the this is the bulk of my talk is to show you that it doesn't really take that long to get this down. You know, you gotta fiddle with it just like a C arm. You gotta get the right picture. But just like with any surgery, the more you set up things right the first time, once you get your exposure, your retractors, whatever, that's what sets up the rest of the case. So this is, you're relying and living and breathing and dying on this image acquisition. So, you know, you take some time for it. I think this is going to run for another, like, minute or so. Um, but this is, this is, here it is, right? Here, this is the actual image acquisition. Everyone leaves the room. None of us are still wearing lead. Any one of us who are scrubbed, we go to the substar. All the anesthesiologist leaves. Um, there's no one else there. And, you know, 20, 21, 22, 23, 30 seconds to get this picture. And then once you have it, again, I just wanted for those for those who don't, there now it's done. You wait for it to input over, and then you take the thing out, and then I I, I get it out completely out. Um, some people like to take one at the end of the case. Once you get used to it, um, and pretty confident with with how you're um, how you're placing everything, um, I just bring a floro at the end, and just do uh, AP lateral and just quick. Uh, easier shots uh, uh, to confirm everything if I want to. So all, here we're just waiting for it to load. Um, it does take a, a minute or so to get onto the stealth station and everything else. Um, but then once you know it's there and once you know the image is pretty clear quality, 
uh, they open up and, 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 you, and you take it out. And once that's in, what's different, and the orthopods are used to this, but you don't look at the patient much anymore, you're just doing it off the screen. And that is, that is a little bit different and you have to kind of learn your hand-eye coordination to adjust. But you can put these four screws in, in you know, with, depending on what kind of system you're using, in you know, 10 minutes. And this is with a, a resident that you're trying to teach how to do this as well. Um, and for the tubular decompression, you can dock your tubes as well. And uh, now instead of using the flow shot to know where you are, you just use the image guidance um, to, to tell you where you are on it. Um, here's the cage go being put in. And at this point, if you look at the clock, that says 940, right? So we've put in the, all four screws, we've done our decompression, and now we're putting our cage in. It's been an hour since we acquired the image. And then this is the final, this is one of the AP shot that shows the cage is in, it's well, nicely centered, the rods are there. And this is a snapshot of the time that it took, right? So we were in the room at 725, which is good, we're supposed to be in there at 730. We started at just about at eight, and that's just what prepping and draping. Um, incision time for the, uh, for the, for the arc was 8.15, and we were closing at 10, and we're out of the room, not just done, but out of the, extubated and out of the room at 10.30. Um, and this is our workflow now with this, and uh, it's, it's been great. So, you know, o overall, um, I don't know what that first one meant, but uh, I'm reducing radiation, I'm shortening my OR time overall, and it, it's, it's conducive to a very streamlined workflow. And just to finish up, I, I do think a lot of this is our modern day cars. So, you know, the young people don't even know what this is anymore, right? Anyone under 30 doesn't even know what that is. The paper map, what the, what the hell's a paper map? Because uh, we all have this now, and this was, you know, the early generation where you had to stick the thing onto your dashboard, right? Now it comes built in and it talks to you. And now if you get one of these, you know, fancier cars, it drives itself, right? And that's, that's the way we're all going. And Paul's gonna talk about robotics in a little bit. The thing with this though, just to make sure that we all know, if you don't know how to, if you don't know what you're doing though, you will fail, right? And we've all seen image guided or robotic screws through the middle of the canal. So the key with this stuff is it works great, but you still have to know what the hell you're doing. Um, but when you do, I think it's a, it's a huge game changer and makes life easier and, and much more uh, appealable. So thank you.